What's going on guys? Steve from the Masters here. And today, yes, you called it. I'm putting that transmission back in my truck. All right, so here we are. I'm underneath the truck sitting upright. So with my transmission up on the jack as promised. So like I said, I put it on the mat, dragged it over, tried to keep this as close to over here as possible so I can have the transmission jack centered underneath here. And then I kind of just shimmied the transmission back up the jack. I mean, it pretty much like pulled it up my lap, kind of lifted up my legs as jack support and kind of lifted on here. So I would say if you're doing this method, you know, make sure you're somebody's got some, some muscle on you or something. I mean, I, I, I'm not at going to the gym every day and squatting and all that, but work, use your, use your larger muscles, use, use some common sense. If you think you can't handle that, um, what you can do is you can crib it up by increments, you know, using blocks of wood and get it over. Rescuers do that to hold up debris that's fallen on somebody so they can get them out. Um, so here's what we're going to do is next thing in these going here is the torque converter, which I have right there. Now, this is a double clunk, as it said. It basically, you put it on and it will align up on these first set of, uh, you know, gearing notches here, splines. But then it also has to line up on these as well, and then further back needs to line up. So basically what you'll see is you'll put it on, it will fit, and then you keep rotating it slowly, and then it will go clunk and go back into the last bit. If you're still unsure, the big thing is it has to sit inside the bell housing, okay? Uh, my back is up against the flex plate. The flex plate uh, sits somewhat inside of here. So think of the flex plate almost you know, dead even with the edge of this, the torque converter has to be in there. See that, that bolt right there sticking down? That's what bolts into the flex plate. So those really can't stick past the bell housing. So anyway, I'm gonna put that in there. Another thing too, I mean, granted, this, this torque converter was on here before and it has fluid in it, but you just check, you don't wanna put a dry torque converter in, that will cause a lot of problems. So I have another uh, quarter transmission fluid there, I'm gonna you know, make sure it's properly topped off. It probably, it's probably okay, but if you're getting a brand new torque converter, they say put two quarts of uh, fluid in there for starters, and that way you avoid having a dry start. So anyway, I'm gonna get this into place, and then, uh, you know what, we'll, we'll talk about shimmying this into place here real quick. So basically, you're gonna slide the transmission forward, and your goal, not a whole lot of space, your goal is to line it up with all the bolts holes around the transmission and then also line it up where the, T, the torque converter, so the, the, you know that blue torque converter is the paint from there. So you'll have these bolts. So there's three things you gotta line up. You gotta line up these, you've gotta line up all the bolts around. And then a the nice thing about these transmissions, they have like these alignment pegs. There's one here and there's actually one on the transmission itself. And then the torque converter, there's a little nub on the bottom, that will fit just inside here. So quite honestly, that's the hardest part about getting a tr automatic transmission to made up is lining up everything so it works. So take your time and slowly get everything where you need to be. Do not force anything. Everything should just go where it is, but pretty much what you can do is line it up, get it perfect. You're gonna move the torque converter, because you can, to line up with these holes. You can't move this. And then you'll line it up with your holes here. If you get these pegs to line up, then you're just gonna throw your bolts through these and then kind of slowly bring it into place. As soon as it mates up, slam all the rest of the bolts in there and you're good to go. And then it's just a matter of like, you know, putting cooler lines in, finish bolting up the exhaust. Matter of fact, there's the, uh, how I put the exhaust bolts in there. And, uh, you know, wiring loom, shift linkage and stuff, which we'll go through step by step. But that's pretty much my process to doing this because. I won't be able to hold the camera and do it at the same time. And as you know, you're not allowed to watch me work. I just work and I give you the steps. So I'm gonna get to it. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. The transmission is in place and I've got the bolts just, you know, hand tight all the way around. Now, for this side, the driver's side, you can reach all the way up in here and get all those bolts. And then on passenger side, uh, one of those bolts I was able to reach back and get, I believe it was that guy right there, tip my finger, um, only just to put it in, couldn't hand tight it, and there's one below it. So here's what you need to do. 
This is like a like an average extension. This is a super long extension. And then because I'm out of impact extensions, I started using my regular ones. So yeah, there's all your extensions you need. And it's a five eighths socket, at least for this. So that's that's the back side. That's the bell housing. Then what you're gonna need to do is do that torque converter bolt. See it sticking through there? So once the transmission gets sucked forward by those bolts, then you'll stick your bolt on there, tighten it down, then rotate the flywheel, uh, you know, from the crankshaft, you put a bolt on the crankshaft, you rotate it and you'll do four bolts there. And this thing is officially in place. It's, then it's just a matter of taking that cross member right there, putting that up. And once the cross member's up, we can take the transmission jack out and we'll have all the room to work. So I'm gonna tighten all the bolts and uh, then I'll bring you back for the rest. All right, so one little detail left out. When you bolt up your transmission, there's three bolts that you need to um, take a second look at. One is one on the side here. That one um, holds, is a, holds the bracket for your dipstick. So you're gonna have to put your dipstick in the same time, do that bolt. And then on this side, up top there, see this piece here? That's a bracket that holds this wire, this um, transmission uh, oil line thing uh, away from, actually fuel lines, keeps the fuel lines away from the transmission housing. So those two bolts have those, so just keep that in mind. All right, my peoples, here we are. All bolted back up, you can put this pan back. There's three bolts that hold that on there. And uh, here's a good point that I wanna make out to you. So like this bolt didn't wanna go in really nice, so I actually had to take a tap and re-tap the hole to get it going. Even then it was still kind of snug. Don't know what that was all about. But just keep it, that's probably a good thing to have with you when you're doing any kind of engine or transmission stuff is a good set of taps. You never know when you're gonna need it because the last thing you wanna do is force the bolt, strip it out. So effectively we're in here. So I put the cross member back. I didn't bolt uh, it in all the way. As you can see, I just screwed everything on so it's all in place. That way like it's all there and I'm not last minute having to unscrew, unbolt anything so I can move it around and get it in place. It's just there. So here's what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna finish uh, bolting all these in, and then we're just gonna go down our checklist, you know? So, uh, you know, like things like start and everything, but I'll bring you along for each one of those so that you can physically see them so you don't have to remember. So first things first, I'm gonna bolt this bolt, the two under here, these two, the two that hold the transmission, these two, there's two more under here, this bolt, and this thing is rock solid in there. And then we'll go on to the next thing. Okay, next on our things to install after putting our bolts in is we're going to do our linkages. So if you remember, bracket, so pretty much... That's kind of the general gist of how it goes up. And that goes on there. So I'm gonna put that on. All right, after we put the linkage in, we're gonna uh, plug in the wiring harness. Remember this one here, here, and then there's one on the other side up over here. And uh, you really can't get this wrong. I mean, there are three separate plugs and they're all different. Actually, yeah, three separate plugs. This one's just a cap in. So just plug them up. And we'll move on to the next thing. All right, so here, next step, we're gonna get our cooler lines, these two, that bolt there, and there is one lower where you can't see it, like down there. Uh, just screw those two in and move on to the next one. All right, next, plug in O2 sensor, and then we're gonna bolt up the exhaust. So two bolts there, and two bolts here. All right, so I took the liberty of uh, bolting up the starter. It's just two bolts. And then on the, the back side here where the solenoid is, is the uh, electrical cable that goes to it. And then I also bolted up this heat shield. So one bolt here, one here. If you're like me, the bolt here is kind of rusted. There's no real threading, so just that bolt. Uh, next, uh, we drained the fluid out of here used uh, from the uh, cooler line there. So just button that up, okay, real simple. And then guess what? 
time to go to step one from the uh, takedown and we're going to install our drive shaft. Like I said, it, the yoke slips in the end here and the end over there bolts up with four bolts. Remember I made red marks with that wax pencil and we just lined the marks up so we know which way it was oriented when we took it off and that's in. And then uh, move on to the very last step. Now what could that last very step be, you could be asking yourself? It's pretty simple. Hook up your battery. Yep. And then I'll just go get a wrench, tighten that bad boy up. Start putting some fluid in here and yeah, take it for a spin. All right guys, it is two days later, so I've had two days to test drive my truck and take it around. And guess what? It works man if you saw my snapchat a couple days ago you would have saw a very very happy stevie cruising down the highway at highway speed in overdrive just i was i was just so happy it was absolutely amazing there's no better feeling in the world than being able to fix the quote unquote hardest most scary magical part of a vehicle aka the automatic transmission and actually have it work it just came together it worked it was just awesome so one thing I didn't include uh, in the videos before was filling up the transmission fluid and getting everything together because if you don't do that right, you'll have symptoms of a bad transmission. And I don't want you walking away going, well, freaking Steve didn't put it up right and this is why it's not working. So what you do is you fill up your transmission as much, as with as many quarts of fluid as it can possibly take. So I did about like eight or nine. And then what you do is you go, you turn on your truck and then you shift it through all its gears, right? And that helps get the fluid through the transmission. Then you go back and you check the, dip, you check the dipstick while it's hot and you add more as you need it. Once you've got it up to the right level, go take it for a trip around the block. If, there, if, the, if you come back and the level's still good, you don't need to add more. If you need to add more, just throw some more in there. And once you've done that, shift through all the gears, then you're perfect. It just will all come together. So anyway, guys, that's all for me. Please try building your own transmission. You'll absolutely have a blast. But before you attempt that, subscribe to my channel right over here. Check out some of my other videos because you're going to want to get some experience working on vehicles before you go and attempt the transmission. It is doable, but I want you to have the experience. Otherwise, Stevie from the Minimasters, thanks for watching.